Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today, we are going to cover the immutable portions of observables, where we're going to treat it like Paul Taylor's actual definition. If you call a function, you actually get an observable back. It's assumed to be asynchronous by default, very similar to a promise or how a promise works. The difference is a promise gives you one value, whereas an observable can shoot out a bunch. So let's compare it to low dash chain. Just to give an example of side by side how they work. Let's convert this ducks function here to a get ducks function. And we'll pass in a parameter of how many so we don't have to hard code five everywhere. And Let's format it. We'll get rid of this and just simply return the value. This will give us an array of five ducks all prepped and ready to go. So let's create the observable version of this. We'll say const get ducks. How many? And just like our Pixie.js sprite has a helper method called from image, which automatically loads the image into the texture and adds that into the display object. We're going to use something for RxJS, which is very similar. The observable here has a plethora of helper methods that are static to create observables from values that are very, very common in JavaScript promises, events, in our case, from array. So we'll create a new array here with how many. So up in Lodash here, we commented it, parameterized it via how many, doing the exact same thing here. And even more exact same is that we want to map it out the same way. Now, not all values are like this. A lot of them are and map is the same. So we can copy and paste the exact same code from Lodash and it'll work. However, if you don't call value gives you a chain that isn't evaluated yet. Once you call value, you evaluate the chain and you get an array out of five items. Here, you get an observable back. And if you listen to that observable, you're going to get five items back in a row, not as a single value. So let me illustrate that real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So you get ducks five. And it's observable, so we have to subscribe to it. Observables on next give you the value. We'll pass in a callback here, which gets the result, and we'll log it out. We'll say result is result, comma result. And when we reload the page, we look, we've got five ducks here because next was called five times. Compare and contrast, you'll see that log result, log result, and we got five ducks in a row. So they still get added to the screen and they work independently because each one of these was called in turn. Where in Lodash, it calls this, then this, then this, once this is lazily evaluated. Whereas in RxJS, the values stream through it one at a time unless you change that. This is great that it's working because our internal functions are, but we don't want five results. We want one result of ducks as an array. We can store it and use our game to know how many ducks are actually in the system. Let's reduce it to get one value using reduce. Unlike Lodash, it takes a function, so we'll pass an accumulator and an item as a function rather than just directly in there like Lodash allows you to. And this array here, this accumulator will be our value, our single value, and we'll just add every single duck item to it. So we'll say accumulator push item and then return the accumulator back. If you wanted to make this a more pure function without actually having to make an external callback, you could do the array spread syntax. If you want to be uber pure, that's cool. Creates a brand new array, automatically adds the item in one line of code. I'm going to do it the imperative way just to make it simple. So now if we hit save and reload the page, you will see that it's a single array now with all the ducks in it, which is fantissimo. And then you can snag this result out and save it in your ducks if you want to do let for now just to give you the illustrated purpose and ducks equals result. Then you'd have your array. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use observables and compare and contrast to low dash chain, except notice they're asynchronous by default. They accept some form of callback. In this case, next, let you know, okay, I've got your data because some of these things could be synchronous and some of these things could be asynchronous. It could have come from a server, could have come from another observable that's asynchronous as well, which is a key difference between Lodash in that each one of these methods is always considered synchronous. So in that case, you have to start using something like Bluebird.js to get similar functionality. This is the more common use case of observables where you return them from functions or pure functions, same input, same output. Expect to treat them very similar to the node fashion where you pass it a callback or a promise where you set it a callback and get the function. So you don't really care if it's asynchronous or not. You just know that this is the style of coding that you do.